Okay, so welcome everyone to the ICTS Drink Seminar. So today we're very happy to have Arjun Bakshi from IIT Kampur, who will tell us some tensionless tells. So up to you, Arjun. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for, for the invitation. And as I have been saying in all of my, my recent talks, it would have been wonderful to be around and actually give this talk in person. And yeah, I mean, especially, yeah, I mean, I, it, it would have been great to see, see friends. I'm really hoping that next time around, I can be there to, to actually give, uh, you know, some other talk. So today, uh, I am going to give you an idea about, uh, I mean, a sort of body of work that we have been doing and the people that I've been doing it with, uh, is, or the tensionless people. So Aurithro Banerjee, Shankari Chakraborty and Pulasto Parekh are the main uh, you know, players in the game. And there are others who have also joined in. Uh, so in, in, at, at IIT Kanpur at the moment, uh, Shudipto, Puneet, Ritankar are my students and Mangish is, is uh, I mean, somebody a lot of you know very well. So, so uh, you know, we are trying to address various aspects of what I'm going to be saying today. So this is this is an, an idea of what we what I will get to. So <clears throat> I'll be focusing mainly uh, on you know uh, the the I mean first part of, of of the talk will be based on on older references here, and then I will be saying a little bit about our uh, I mean newer works here, and towards the end if I can uh, get get to it, there there'll be a little bit about these these papers as well. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I'll start off with an introduction, a very broad one, and give you a little bit about null, I mean, classical null strings before going on to quantum mechanical aspects. And, uh, and, and we have, uh, I mean, as, as I showed you in the previous slide, quite a bit of work in this area. So I don't know how much I would be able to say, but I'll try and try and do my best. And, uh, okay, so let's, let's start. Um, so why do we want null strings? What are they? Uh, you know, why are we interested? So master's point particles move on null <laughs> geodesics, the world lines are null. So null strings are extended analogs of master's point particles. These are so essentially tensionless or null strings are, are, uh, are the extended, uh, extended analogs of master's point particles. So these have been looked at since uh, I mean, child in the 1970s. And uh, so we, we, we know something very well. Uh, so we, we, we know that you know, when we look at the point particle limit of string theory, we, we get to classical gravity. Um, but what we are interested in in this talk is going to be the other uh, limit. The, I mean, if you wish, the extreme high energy, the ultra string regime, where we take the uh, tension going out to zero. So the, I mean, null strings are, are important for, as I will, I'm trying to say, you know, a very quantum, uh, very quantum gravity, if you wish, strings at high high temperatures. I, I'll touch briefly upon this. Um, uh, sorry, um, uh, Arjun, but yeah. uh, when, I mean, uh, the tension and the string coupling in in principle, you can adjust. That is right. Like, yeah. So so I'll I'll I will try try to I mean be uh, I'll 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 be speaking mainly mainly uh, um, about the uh, i mean the free free theory uh, yeah, at the moment and uh, so so that's that's yeah. that's that's of course another handle uh, I mean, right. but uh, then it's not really quantum in that sense uh, it's more uh, it's classical highly curved uh, string i mean i i mean i i will try and uh, uh, quantize these as well. So I, I I will look at the I mean the free I mean I'll look at the free theory. Uh, I mean equivalent of of what uh, I mean uh, the uh, uh, Polyakov action is uh, for 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 these things. And I'll try and I mean also uh, you know I mean say something about uh, classical aspects of it and and then I mean try and go beyond it. I mean, of course, yeah, I, no, I, I, I think I, I was alluding to the quantum gravity part of it. Yes, the, the right, gravity right. part of it is classical. <laughs> so yes, I mean, so so this this essentially again should be looked upon as a first step to then then try trying to yeah, build on from from there. Okay. 
So, and uh, I'll not not really have much to say about links leads to higher spin theory. I mean, obviously there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's so I'll I'll, I'll try and uh, you know give you a, a little bit of, of of an idea about what we have to say about you know uh, for example strings at very high temperatures and strings here at space and senior temperatures. Okay, so uh, the summary of our, our results uh, stated in, in a very short way is that when when we we'll be making a use of symmetries on the world sheet. So what is going to appear is the three-dimensional bonding master sarks algebra, and uh, we will not be speaking about supersymmetry. So so the three three D BMS algebra will arise on the world sheet on this of the string as opposed to two copies of, of the sort of algebra. We will see that the uh, in classical tensionless strings, they, they, they would have uh, properties which we can obtain intrinsically and also as a limit of usual strings and super strings. And uh, when, when we move on to uh, the quantum mechanical aspects, we will see that there are new, there's new physics that emerges from. Okay, so let's start off uh, with, with uh, I mean, uh, classical null strings. So this is going to be uh, following uh, some old work by Isberg, Lindstrom, Sundberg, and uh, Theodorus. Uh, so, and, and I'll get to what we have tried to do after that as well. So, you know, uh, so we will start off with the number of action. Of course, the tension sits out in front of it, it's not, not a good idea to take t equals to zero in equation one. So what we will do is we'll switch to the Hamiltonian uh, framework. And in that, that case, what you can do is, uh, so you can write the generalized momenta, the uh, constraints and, and, and the Hamiltonian of the system where, uh, where, where you are you're going to. So it's, it's uh, then you, you can put this back uh, into the action and uh, in, in that case, what, what you see is that the I mean, tension is no longer sitting out in front, but goes, goes into this, this term that, that I highlight out here. So you can uh, I mean, happily take the t goes to zero limit and end up with an action which looks all right. You, you can rewrite this in, in, in the usual uh, uh, sort of Polyakov way. And, and uh, what, what you get is G, G alpha beta is, is going to be identified as something like uh, the, the equation that I've tried to highlight here. So the T going to zero is a singular limit. And what happens is when you take this, this limit, I mean, something has to show up on the world sheet. What, what happens is you see that the determinant of, of the metric, sorry, actually uh, goes to zero. And what so so in, in this limit, what we are going to be doing is that so this is this is going to be sort of like a defining feature. So it's a null string. So since since this is a not null string, the the world sheet metric will will will, will be will be degenerate, and we will replace. Uh, I mean this uh, square root ggab, a g g alpha beta by v alpha v betas, which are yeah, vector densities. So in the limit t goes to zero, uh, equation number five can be thought of as, uh, so, so is this, this is the action that we would be interested in. This you can think about as a starting point for, for these, these objects. You can, uh, you can uh, you choose not to refer to any sort of uh, parent theory to start off with and treat these as fundamental objects. And so whenever we speak about trying to do some things intrinsically, we will be uh, speaking about trying to start off from this action five and trying to do things from there. Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Uh, so, can you think of this uh, vector as a uh, as a tetra uh, as a dyad? Yeah. So that's that is that is that is there. Then all 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 you will have to do you will also have to have I mean have the determinant which sits outside. So determinant. That, sorry. So there, there will be so so there will be an e, right? So it's it is it's mm -hmm. it's also going to have so it yeah so you would 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 be able to so this is a I mean this is a, a, a vector density as you see there 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 you you you'll also have the e so there's a square root g uh, which which sits here which makes it this I mean vector density 
but but you can equivalently formulate it in in in, in terms of uh, the DAX as well. Okay. So, so, so the, just to understand, maybe this is related to the previous question. So V, v alpha, V beta, are, we, we are going to look for the equations of motion with respect to them. They are also fields yeah. in the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I see. OK. OK, so uh, that's that. So now what are we going to do? So what, what, what I told you is that we could think about some things as a fundamental <laughs> and tensionless theory. So you start off with this action and then, then go on to your favorite thing, if you will, in, in your uh, tensionless theory. Right? We have, we've shown you that this, this way, way also works. So you, you can get, get to the action from usual string theory. So a natural question is, can you actually close this uh, square in the other way? I'll show you when, when you are looking at the uh, classical theory, this is indeed true, okay? I'll outline this for you. Okay, so let's start off uh, simple and let's uh, look at what, to do. so uh, the tensionless action is invariant <clears throat> under Wolchi uh, diffeomorphisms. So we will have to fix a gauge. So we will call, we'll fix a gauge where we will uh, fix this to be V alpha is V zero, where V is, uh, is a constant. So, uh, you know, from, from our, our lessons in usual uh, tensile string theory, we know that if we fix the, uh, I mean, residual, so uh, if we fix the gauge to the conformal gauge, there's still some residual gauge symmetry left over. This, uh, this gives you, uh, I mean, the two copies of the Virasoro algebra, essential to understanding string theory. What we will, what, what I will briefly show you here is that there is a similar residual gauge symmetry left over after you gauge fix here as well. Okay. All right, so these are worksheet <laughs> and worksheet diffeomorphisms. So these, uh, they, they change, change the vector density uh, in, in, in this way. <clears throat> now we have fixed gauge as V0. So then, then you, you'd see that if you choose, uh, I mean, epsilon alpha as this guy, then what you end up with, I mean, you do, do your usual I mean, straight, straightforward uh, broad analysis. And uh, you, you would then get up, get the symmetry algebra as the thing in the red box down here, okay? So notice that we have not got two copies of the with algebra here. So CL and CM are two central uh, terms that I wrote down here. This is obviously, this is something that will not come from the algebra. This is something that you can write, write down. Uh, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, consistent with the algebra. We will show uh, what, what they become when, when, we, uh, when we look at what, I mean, what the vacuum structure, et cetera, is. For the moment, the, the equivalent of, of the with algebra uh, is that the thing without the central extension. So this algebra has been, is, is the three-dimensional bony mass of Sachs algebra, the 2 d and conformal algebra, which has arisen in various places before. So, sorry, why, why can't you compute CL and CM unambiguously? It's a, I mean, there's a conformal theory on the on the whole sheet, right? No, no. So, so it will depend on what exactly your operator ordering is, what I mean, what your <laughs> vacuum is, and so on and so forth. We we will will be able to do it. So I never said why should CL and CM depend on the back? I mean, this is just a commutator. So why should it depend on uh, any of so, those so, ordering or on that? Uh, the commutator won't care about the the. Uh, yes, I. Oh, oh I. Uh, so this I is this is. Yeah. yeah. So, so the right, right right now, this is just. I mean, this is. There is no. I mean, no other information, right? And I mean, in the sense, if you do do this, I, I mean, for 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 the I mean, usual spring theory, I mean, you'll also not not get this. I mean, central extensions from here, right? So, so you will need to put in the. I mean, the information of how how the operators are ordered, or I mean, in in order to extract the central terms. That's the. I mean, in, could, yeah. Sorry, I mean, in usual string theory, it doesn't depend really on the operator ordering. It depends on the number of scalar fields. That's right. That's right. Yes. But after that, it, it's D, it's just D, right? That is true. Yes. Yes. It will, so will, it, will be D. Yes. Yeah. So here also, you should be able to calculate once you fix up your field content, right? That is right. So, so it, it will, will be D. D what, what I'm just trying to say is that, I mean, I, I've not, I mean, so I won't be able to fix what D is through just this, right? That's all. Okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, so what 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 is something that, that we can do? So, for example, so let's let's try try to figure out what exactly the limiting uh, procedure here is. So, you know, for example, we can start off with, with, with the usual string string theory, and you know, there are two uh, two copies of your Virasa algebra, and 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 you know, so this worksheet is. I mean, so we are thinking uh, of closed strings. So, worksheet is a cylinder. So, the symmetry is best expressed in the conformal generators on the cylinder. Uh, so, what is this limit? This limit is where the. I mean, this is the limit where the string becomes long and floppy. So it's it's the limit where the length of the string, in a sense, I, I mean, becomes infinite. What 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 we will so we are also interested in closed strings. So what we will try and do is we will we will uh, we'll show that that you know this this can be achieved uh, by looking at a limit where sigma goes to sigma and tau goes to epsilon tau when when you take I mean epsilon up to zero. So yeah, I mean, in a sense, so this is what 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 we are doing. We, the string is becoming long and uh, long and floppy. Okay. So uh, so if if we do this, so then what what we can do is we can re, I mean re, redefine the I mean generators in terms of the ones that I just wrote for you uh, just earlier. So these uh, flat errors are related to these script errors, and ends are are. Uh, I mean, also uh, related to them, and uh, if you if you take this limit that I just uh, have showed you, what what you can find that it, this is actually uh, I mean this is reproduces the thing that we got earlier through just the uh, I mean just the symmetry analysis, uh, which was uh, I and mean, which was uh, intrinsic. Okay, so so again, this is um, a little close to form what what I just said. And uh, I, I'll not uh, say a lot, lot about this here, but uh, in a sense, what happens is when we take, take this limit, the world sheet uh, velocities effectively go to zero. Essentially, what happens is the world sheet speed of light actually goes to zero. It's, it's a limit that is these days called, I mean, the uh, Carolian limit, where, where light cones close up. So the metric, uh, the world sheet metric becomes degenerate. And uh, what we will, what what happens is that the Riemannian structure on the world sheet will actually change to, uh, I mean, these things with, with, with the degenerate metric, and uh, so these other, I mean, structures will will will, will actually, uh, I mean, be be different, will be, a, I mean, more like a fiber bundle like structure. Okay, so uh, so just again, just 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 to go go through some uh, <laughs> rudimentary. Uh, uh, Basics. What what we what we know very well is that when we look at uh, string theory, we quantize the world sheet as a, a theory of free scalars, and the constraints are the vanishing of of the equations of motion of the metric, which uh, which were fixed to be flat. So the operative form of this is that the physical states will uh, vanish under the action of of the energy momentum uh, energy momentum tensor, essentially. So uh, let's let's just do do this exercise. Uh, uh, Quickly, we can we can take this uh, limit on 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 the I mean energy one tensors now. And once once we do that, so the the uh, classical constraint on on the tension of the string are this t one and t uh, two being equal to zero. Uh, I'll, I'll urge you to remember that, that that these look like this. And uh, so hopefully I'll I'll get get to this at, at the end of the day. So one uh, one thing that we, we would be able to see that when we write down what the uh, I mean uh, quantum version of this is, then the, the physical spectrum of the tension the string is uh, restricted by the uh, so-called sandwich uh, 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 sandwich conditions, where you you uh, you know sandwich the t one and t two between two physical states. Okay. So that was that. Uh, so let's let's do let's do the I mean, usual things. So we have a fixed gauge, and in this gauge, the equations of motion are just simply x double dot equal to zero, and the uh, solution to this is is, uh, is 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 going to be given by what I've just flashed here. Uh, I want to look at closed strings, so I'm I'm going to be uh, so so I uh, so in that case, the a naught will be actually equal to zero. And uh, you can write what the I mean, constraints are. You'll see that you'll get I mean, constraints of the form 
So the x dot squared will, will be a b dot b, b constraint and the x dot x prime uh, is, 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 is going to be the other one, which, which will be something which has a's and b's uh, in it. So once, once we, if we define LNs as being uh, a dot b and uh, m's as being b dot b, in that case, we can uh, rewrite this in uh, terms of, I mean, uh, these, I mean, LN plus MNs and MNs, et cetera. So this is, I mean, again, exactly what we just uh, showed you in, in the last slide, which were familiar from, from uh, I mean, just purely the I mean, algebra point of view. Okay, so the algebra of the modes, I would uh, um, just uh, point out here that these A's and B's do not form a, I mean, harmonic oscillator uh, basis. They, they actually are more like X and P. So uh, the world sheet uh, symmetries of, of these, uh, of these strings and now can be understood as uh, I mean quadratic of, the, of these modes. And again, uh, I mean, as we expect, the, uh, I mean, the BMS algebra, it, it uh, closes to form uh, the BMS algebra. So that's another sanity check that things are going in the right direction. Okay. Now we, we can, as, as I said, we wanted to close the square. I, I wanted to show you that. Yeah, you know, question. Yes. Uh, why didn't the central charge make an uh, appearance in the expression for the LMLNs commuter? So it's, it's still uh, classical, actually. Oh, classical. Okay, fine. So, uh, so what what we now what we want to do is we, we want to just uh, I mean rewrite this in in, in terms of um, so I mean as I said if I just I mean take you back to the square. So what, what I've shown you is I've, I've gone uh, you know, with, with the mode expansions I've gone from here to here. Now I want to close the square. So now let's, let's go back and try and close the square. Oops, sorry. There has to be a better way to do this. Just give me a second. Oh, no. All right, since <laughs> it doesn't seem to be a better way to do this, I think let's get through this once more. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, so now what, what we do is uh, we, uh, we take, take this limit, as I said, uh, you know, T goes, I mean, tau goes to epsilon tau, sigma goes to sigma, and we'll also, also scale, I mean, alpha prime, since I mean, alpha prime is, is, is equivalent to, uh, I mean, is, is one by T. So T goes to zero is alpha prime goes to infinity. And we plug back into the usual uh, yeah, tensile mode expansions. Keep, I mean, keep, keep, keep everything uh, you know, in, in order. You see that these red epsilons uh, float around. You just need to be uh, careful about um, uh, terms. And then what you find is uh, you will find that you will find a relation between the oscillators A and, 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 and the oscillators alpha and B and alpha as well. And uh, using what we what we had earlier, you would be able to show that you can reproduce again uh, the thing that I showed you from I mean algebra I mean, in, in, in the algebraic way. That is L's. I mean you know the relation between script L's and uh, and L's and script L's and M's. Okay. All right. So this this is sort of uh, you know uh, makes sense, and uh, the classical uh, things seem to make sense. Now let me let me try and go ahead and try and give you something which which we which we found. Um, and uh, let's 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 see. All right. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to take quick uh, uh, detour and we are going to be uh, so I should have actually uh, mentioned this which I did not. I'm being bad with <laughs> yeah, references. So this is work by uh, uh, Blaja Oblak, Glenn Barnish, uh, Andre Campaloni, and, and others. Uh, so when we are looking at, uh, I mean, uh, the BMS algebra, there's this important class of representations which are called these uh, massive modules. These are going to be labeled with M naught and L naught, which gives the mass and the spin of, of the representations. And all the MNs, rest of the MNs acting on, 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 on the states would be equal to zero. 
So these will help help us build what is this uh, I mean induced uh, induced module, and uh, you know all the else irrespective of of whether they are less than zero or more than zero can can be used to build these uh, I mean build these uh, uh, basis vectors which which then uh, you you can use to build the rest of the representation. The fun here is that when you start off with with uh, the uh, usual Virasoro. Uh, 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 primary conditions, uh, which is uh, you know L n and L bar n with n uh, with then zero acting on H bar equal to zero, and you take this limit. So this is this is not L, uh, this is not L n. This I should correct this. This is L not. Uh, so when when you when you actually uh, look at the, the okay. So that was not supposed to happen. Okay. So when you when you look at the limit from here. Then what, what you see is uh, that um, you would, would be able to, uh, so if you start off with, with the uh, uh, you know, way that the uh, Virasoro generators and, and, the, uh, and the DMS generators are mapped, you'll see that these, these, uh, and these two, two conditions map onto two equations like this. And it's very clear that in the epsilon going to zero limit, the only terms that will be left over are the ends. And the L's will just go away. So, uh, so what is what is going to happen is that you get get back on the fact that uh, these highest, I mean, these uh, there are sort of uh, primary conditions actually. So, so this highest weight 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 representation in this uh, in this uh, limit actually goes over to this class of of, of representations called these massive modules. Okay, so now we want to look at this from the point of view of, of, uh, of what we are doing. So, uh, you know, so in this case, what we will have is that, uh, you know, so all the M's acting on this, this MS was equal to zero. So in this case, what we'll have in the oscillator language, all the B's acting on this would be equal to zero. So we, we will have, uh, so when we were interested in, in the vacuum, so what, what we'll have is all, all the Bn's acting on this I, which we'll call the induced vacuum. This is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's let's just, I mean, you know, I'm going, I'm defining a lot of things, but but let me let me just, it's it's all extremely simple and straightforward, but let's do this. So I uh, I mean told you at the beginning that my algebra with the A's and B's where is was was not, I mean, harmonic oscillator algebra. So let me just remind you of, of that. So, so my algebra with, with the A's and B's was not harmonic oscillator algebra as, as we wrote down here. So I, I, uh, I mean, remind you of this. So then um, what we will do is now we will actually go on to try to write down, I mean, some, I mean, harmonic oscillators from uh, from A's and B's. So these will be called in C, C and C tilde. And uh, so uh, you you can rewrite C's and C tildes in in terms of alphas and I mean alpha tildes. So the point to note here is that the vacuum defined by the C's and the vacuum defined by the alphas is not the same. There is a mixing between raising and <laughs> raising and lowering operators here. Yeah? And the other point that I want, want, want you to notice is that this Bn on i equal to zero, that in this language of the C's boils down to Cn plus C tilde minus n acting on i equal to zero for all n. This is actually uh, a Neumann, uh, I mean, uh, condition for a Neumann boundary state. And the uh, solution of this is given by uh, the blue equation down at the down at the bottom. Let's keep this in mind and let's go ahead. Okay, so I mean, it it, it was obvious that 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 you know the relation between uh, these alphas and c's was essentially a Bolivar transformation happening on the world sheet. And if since since we since we can write that we can now now write a relation between the two I mean two two vacua one which was defined by the alphas and one which is defined by these uh, I mean uh, 
potentialist operators sees. And that is, is, is a well, well known thing from, from, and what we can do is we can actually write down uh, the uh, relation explicitly, of course. So from the point of view of zero C, zero alpha is a squeezed state. So it's a two, two mode squeezed state. Um, so what is happening? So we, what we do is if we start off with epsilon equal to one, which is, I mean, tan hyperbolic theta is equal to zero in, in the last slide. So then, then, then of course, your C vacua, I mean, your C oscillators and your alpha oscillators are the same. This is the closed string, string vacuum. Now, as I dial my, my, uh, my tension with, from the point of view of the C, uh, C observer, this vacuum is going to evolve and it would become the squeeze state as, as we have seen before. In the limit where epsilon goes to zero, this tan hyperbolic theta goes to minus one. Thus the relation between zero alpha and zero C becomes the one uh, given by, by the, these uh, CNs, right? This is precisely what we introduced before as this induced, induced vacuum. So this, this is a Neumann boundary state. So we, this is essentially a free stream which is, uh, I mean, this is a string, uh, this is an open string, I'm sorry, which is free to move in all dimensions or a space filling libre. So what we have done is that we have just started off with a uh, closed string theory and we have taken this uh, tensionless limit. And what we find is that there is, uh, I mean, the, the evolution into a Neumann boundary state, which we are going to uh, interpret as an open string. I'll draw, uh, I, mean, two, I mean, two pictures for you here. So, you know, you start off with the closed string as, as the tension decreases, the string grows long and floppy. And at the end of the day, when, when, when the tension has gone to zero, there is an emergent, uh, I mean, open string. Uh, an equivalent uh, picture in, in terms of brains is that you start off with 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 a string, uh, which which sort of so you know my little box out here is is my sp I mean, space time, and uh, the string sort of grows longer and longer until it fills out the whole of I mean whole of the I mean space time as 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 the tension decreases. So this is one of the main. Another question. Yes, please. What happens to the central charge finally now that you have quantized the? Yes, I I will have uh will have a lot of things to say about it. Okay. Uh, I mean, well, I, I I don't know if I will have a lot of things to say about, it, but I'll have some things to say about it for sure. Okay, so uh, just just hold on a little bit, then I I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get to that. Uh, Arjun, um, the yes. previous slide. Uh, yes. This um. Uh, this long open string is yes. it along the null direction? Yes, it is. It is. Okay, so uh, the endpoints are null separated. Uh, 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 that's right. Uh, that's what you mean. I mean, this you 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 can think about as as uh, you know. So so at in in the limit, you you can think about this as a string of massless I mean, point particles. Which, which, which essentially also have the uh, memory that it is a string. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, your light cone has collapsed and that's yes. why uh, you, it, the null direction is like a spatial direction. Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, the null direction is a line. I mean, yeah. So, so the light, light cones will, will close up. And so, so I'll, I'll have some more, uh, Okay. I mean, pictures to show you about uh, something that we're trying to, I mean, understand in terms of Rindler. Hopefully, that'll that'll give a slightly uh, better understanding. But yeah, I mean, of course. So 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 the, the the idea essentially is that at the end end of the day, things will just I mean close up essentially. So on on the world sheet, your light cones just close up. So close up means uh, so they are kind of. It's the time direction that is kind of the cone is closing in the time direction, right? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so so the string is sort of a null string would be stretched along the time direction. Uh, the, or 
so the uh, so the i would i would assume that maybe the picture below is a bit better i don't know um so so the the essential yeah so the the point is that um yeah so uh, let me let me actually show you the 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 other and pictures in a little bit and uh, maybe i mean I, I i i of course do not have and all the answers but 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 the idea is that so yeah so the uh, the time 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 direction so so the null null direction if you are thinking of it from from uh, from the point of view of of uh, uh, i mean from the world sheet observer uh, point of view if you will so you the the it's it's uh, it's uh, the the I mean that yeah the, so the light light cone which was forty five to start off with has 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 just closed up basically right but, but sorry but in, in space time uh, it stays low and right it's it's only on the world sheet that it yeah so this is this is all on the world sheet so what I what I would 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 think is 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 uh, yeah so it's it's a little uh, mis I mean well. In space time, what is happening is that so it, it would be so in, in, in space time, these world sheets will, will be sort of null yeah, surfaces, basically, right? It's, it's essentially the same as what, what, what happens when you think of it, you know, massless yeah, point particles, right? They'll mm -hmm. move along things which are not, not null geodesics. Now, these what, what will happen to these is, is that they, these will move along I mean, surfaces which are null. Okay, uh, and uh, but uh, no, I, I'm just confused. The space filling, if it uh, by the, the so uh, that's a one endpoint is uh, can be anywhere in space, and the other endpoint will be, uh, I mean, uh, of course, at any given moment of time in the space time, the other endpoint will be along the light cone at, from that. Point, uh, yeah, I mean the uh, the only the only sort of thing that I'm I'm absolutely sure of is uh, is what what I wrote down here. So what what we get is 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 this object essentially. Right. Uh, so I'm trying to understand the get a picture of what that means. This uh, quantity. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah. So let me try and give okay. you a few. Maybe few as more. you go yeah, along, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's yeah. let's let's okay. let's see because yeah, we are, we're also trying trying to understand it from you know some other points of view. Maybe something will help a little bit more. At this point, what is the dimensionality of the space time? Dimensionality of the space time is something that we will get to, and the dimensionality of space time is something that I've not said said anything about, but. Uh, we will see that you can, uh, so these can be thought about as usual, uh, I mean, you know, as uh, sort of uh, limits of uh, usual string theory. So you can think about d equal to uh, 26, but I'll, I'll, I'll have a clearer, a clearer explanation in a few more slides, hopefully. So I want to, uh, I mean, sort of, uh, you know, uh, Try try and uh, intrigue you a little bit more. Uh, maybe say a few things which which are not uh, well. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how you react to this. Uh, so if you start off with any uh, perturbative state in usual string theory, which which you which you have have as this, uh, and we want to understand what happens when you I mean make this null. So what we are, we're going to be very close to the light cone. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be expanding the alpha, I mean, alpha vacuum as, as this, yeah, in, in, uh, this induced vacuum I, which I introduced, and also these I1s and I2s, okay? Uh, it's, 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 it's just an expansion. So let's, let's just try to do a really simple, uh, simple analysis. So you start off with, with, with the alpha vacuum, which translates to alpha and, and alpha tilde and acting on this alpha equal to zero and plug this in there. So you get some relations with, with the BNs acting on, on I, which you found earlier and uh, you know, the I, I ones and so on and so forth. Now you, now you start with the state. You start with the state, which, which, you, uh, which, which I just said, I mean, a, a perturbative state in the usual string theory and you take this lift okay? and you just do, do a little bit of, of the algebra. What you'll find is for any generic state, 
this essentially boils down to it. I mean, it, it just goes goes to I again. So what is happening is when you when you start to to do this. So what is happening is this: all these perturbative closed string states actually uh, condense to form form this uh, sort of emergent open string. So, so in a sense, this is what is happening. You start off with the usual uh, tensile string spectrum. When you decrease uh, and decrease the uh, tension, the spacing decreases, but there is no uh, I mean, qualitative change. But at the end of the day, everything sort of uh, I mean condenses on 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 this uh, I mean, zero i state. Okay. So, so all these perturbative states that you that that were there in a, a usual string theory. Have, have just gone on down to form this one uh, open stream state. Okay, so uh, this was this was something that 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 uh, we did found a little question? while. Yes, please. So uh, I mean, uh, you're talking about both kinds and condensation, but I mean, yeah, I'm there is. I, there I'm is I'm, no I'm, tr I'm trying trying not to, but but, but yeah. yeah, you know, this this is this is sort of uh, you know as yeah. as I said. Uh, the the catch word here is like right it's yeah. like so yeah. so i so i mean in that spirit uh, yes can you interpret the uh, string tension as a kind of a temperature uh so what i want to actually say is that uh, i would want to do that but there is also this other thing which i wanted to actually link up to in the sense that this essentially happens when you take the um, string, string temperature to be extremely high okay so it's extremely high and it's so when you when you actually heat up strings near the hagedorn uh, 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 i mean phase transition point this this actually uh, so so the tension of these strings become uh, i mean equal to zero so it's sort of accessing mm -hmm. that that thing and i would in an ideal world, I would like to think of it as, I mean, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, Hagedorn phase transition as something like a, a, a Bose-Einstein thing on on the world sheet. So we are not there yet. I'm, I'm I'm just showing you that this this very simple algebra gets you here. That is that is all that I'm trying to say. Okay, thank you. Could you could you plus please again explain how you get this in? Uh... I plus B n I one equal to zero, etc. Yeah, yeah, sure. So what you do is you start off with with this, I mean this 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 expansion, right? So so what what you're doing is you you saw that in the limit your zero alpha when your epsilon goes to zero your zero alpha becomes this I this uh, induced uh, ground state. Right, I am going very close close to uh, I mean epsilon equal to zero, but not 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 on it. So I I I have made an expansion of this this site, this this type. Now okay. what I do is simply just just look at what what uh, so the uh, zero alpha vacuum is defined by alpha and acting on zero alpha and alpha tilde and acting on zero alpha equal to zero. Now you just just plug these in. You you know what a n is in uh, a, I mean terms of I mean uh, so you you know what alpha n is in terms of a n and b n. You plug plug that in. You know what zero alpha is in uh, terms of i i one i two, and you I mean do this order by order. Okay. okay. And then then you just get this again. Very very simple stuff. All right. Uh, no, sorry. Um, can you say something about the zero mode? Uh, uh, right. normally, uh, normally the vacuum the zero alpha carries a momentum center of mass yes, momentum yes, limit. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, that goes away in some ways been there because it's normally in the world sheet that is proportional to tau that uh, is that is so so the, so the zero mode essentially <laughs> so yeah i i have been caught of course uh, so the zero mode is is something that that so so there are two two ways of trying to deal with it one one will be when i mean everything so that i mean k will also be equal to zero so no no no, no momentum anywhere. so that is that is that is sort of like the thing that i've been saying here but you can also put some i mean some some, some sort of momentum i mean in this as well uh, so you you so, can uh, can you're saying you yes, can yes, a yes. generalized uh, set of vacua which are yes. not zero yes. alpha but uh, zero with some k yeah with 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 k yes 
So and then it, the, the, the only thing that will change is, is that you're, I mean, as you, you'd probably see, I, I have said that BN acting on I, I mean, this essentially, this holds for, uh, I mean, N, which is not equal to zero. Yeah. So you, you can have, I mean, B is zero acting on I equal to zero, but you can also have B, B, B zero acting on, on, on I giving you some I mean, K into I. But the K squared I mean, will be equal to zero, of course. Okay. But in general, you need some non-zero K, right? Well, otherwise, the strings won't move at all. Yeah, so you, you can keep, uh, I mean, you can keep some, I mean, some K in the K. Okay. Okay, so let me show you. So uh, how am I doing on uh, time, Victor? So, Not very well, I, I, like, I would assume. <laughs> no, I think it's fine. I mean, you, you, okay. got, you, get some question, you got some questions. So I don't yes. know, how, how long would you need to finish? I, I can speak for a week, so then let's let's not leave it up to me. <laughs> but but so so, uh, so, no. so so I I have so if if uh, yeah so let me let me sort of go go ahead. I don't need me to finish the whole 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 you know all the slides of the talk. But let me sort of no. But it's also because I, I mean we don't we are not very strict on time. So okay, okay. depending so, on yeah. how much you need, uh, we can just let you speak. <laughs> all right. So uh, all right. So what? So one one of the things that you know one one you, one thing that you can do is uh, you know when when we think about uh, uh, I mean bubble transformations the first thing we speak uh, we, we think about uh, is uh, is uh, I mean our real space times so what we what what we did in this 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 work from I mean uh, you know last last year uh, is is that. We we uh, I mean identified our. Uh, uh, Bobolio transformations uh, at, with with uh, Rindler Bobolio transformations in two dimensions, and in that case, you can recast this decrease of uh, tension on the world sheet as an increase of a, an acceleration of the world sheet. Okay, so what what we will do is we will I'll not be saying a lot about this, but what we'll do is we'll mod, uh, model this tensionless limit of of string theory. As a, a series of world sheet observers with increasing increasing acceleration, and this tension list or this null string will emerge when this accelerated observer actually hits the I mean during the horizon, and here is where the acceleration would go go to infinity. So uh, very quickly, so let let me get rid of this. So a quick. Uh, Rindler tour is something that I'll not not actually um, you know bore you with, but what I wanted to uh, wanted to highlight, and this uh, thing just pops up, is is this last boxed equation here. Okay, so when we when we look at the relation between the uh, Rindler Rindler oscillators and the Minkowski oscillators, you you have a certain thing which is uh, which is you know well known. And the other thing that I want, want to uh, remind you is what, what happens when we look at the equal, equal time, time slices in Rindler. So these, these are you know, like, like uh, you know, these eta one, eta two, uh, eta three and so on. Remember that the time flows you know, upward in the, uh, in the right wedge and it flows downward in the left wedge. So the equivalent things here are this eta one, eta two, uh, eta three. And so the lines are, are, are like this, okay? The lines are, are like this. So it just goes through, uh, I mean, through this point at the center. And so, so what, what can we do? So what we can do is we can think about the equivalent of the, so, so what is, uh, so there are two ways in which we can hit the, uh, I mean, the horizon. The first one is uh, by, increasingly accelerated world sheets. So you start off with something that does not have an acceleration here, and then you accelerate a bit, accelerate a bit more, accelerate a, a lot, lot more. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, your A goes to infinity and, and this is you hit the light cone. So that's what is happening. So now what you, what you can do is you can look at the box equation that I showed you last time. I mean, not, not last time, in the last slide, and you can take this acceleration, I mean, the very large acceleration limit out here. And then 
you can actually show that this this is what 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 we were, were we were out to show is something uh, something that 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 you can clearly see that you would be able to identify these C the C oscillators that we had earlier with the ones with with the Rindler uh, Rindler uh, I mean Rindler oscillators when this Rindler acceleration goes to infinity. So indeed, the zero I mean zero tension. Uh, limit of string, string theory you can identify as the infinite acceleration limit. So now we have a, I mean, complete interpolating uh, uh, solution. You start off with with the a is equal to zero. So these these just are the alphas and alpha primes, and and in between you you have these sort of uh, I mean Rindler oscillators, and at the end of the day the, these BB uh, BB tildes go I mean go to C and C tilde. So what we had before that that particular analysis is close is is true very close to the light cone, and now with this sort of uh, interpretation of of Rindler, what what we have is a full I mean interpolating thing that starts off at at zero and goes to infinity through this chain of of uh, you know increasing the accelerated surface. I, as I said, I could go on speaking about this for a lot. We said a lot of uh, very neatly things in, in, in this work, but uh, you know, since I am running a little short on time, let me give you another uh, you know, uh, nice looking uh, picture before I move on to some, some of the other things that were addressed that, that were asked in the talk. So another way of hitting the Rindler horizon is by keeping the acceleration fixed and evolving in in the time. Now, so this is this is the fun part of it. As I showed you, you know these these are the things that you have to do. So first, the eta equal to zero is this. Then there's an eta which is which is uh, which is small. Then there's an eta which is large, and ultimately you get get to infinity. So now, sorry, oops, yeah. So the fun part is this. So if you actually uh, if you actually take these I mean cross sections. You will be reproducing the picture that I showed you in the last, I mean, in, in, in the last part of the talk where I was, you know, looking at these floppy strings. So it, it starts off being a circle, becomes elongated, more elongated, even more elongated. And at the end of the day, when you hit the, I mean, hit, hit, hit the horizon, it actually becomes this long, long, uh, long straight line. Okay. So this is again uh, this 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 you 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 can do do the map as well and it's it's a straightforward exercise that you know when you take this limit in the appropriate way you start off with uh, I mean, two two copies of Virasoro uh, take the limit in the right way in these uh, I mean conformal generators uh, on in 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 Rindler and when you hit the light cone this BMS symmetry and the null string naturally emerges. Very good. So that was that was that was that. And um, finally, uh, I am going to tell you a little bit about something we call a tail of three. So uh, I, I I mean I mean uh, told you at the beginning that the classical constraints of the tensionless string were these t one and t two acting. I mean I mean equal to zero. And when we get to the quantum mechanical aspect of it, you need to sandwich it in, in between uh, physical states. Okay. What we showed in this work is that, interestingly, that from a single classical uh, uh, theory, several inequivalent quantum theories actually may emerge. And if you do this analysis, uh, this uh, you know just a uh, rather well, I I, I wouldn't. Uh, a little a, a bit, bit tedious, but but more or less straightforward analysis of uh, um, canonical quantization of the tensionless strings. This is something that that you can see. So what we do is so this essentially boils down to these LNs and MN sandwiched between these two. Uh, I mean, physical states being equal to zero, and there are three ways that you can actually uh, I mean obtain something some 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 stuff that looks like this. Okay. So the first one is very well known in the sense that this is just the highest rate stuff, Fn acting on the uh, physical states being equal to zero. Second one is something that, that, that we just saw, right? Uh, uh, you, you can have some of these, I mean, oscillators, I mean, you know, for Fn where n is not, not equal to zero, that, that, that can give you uh, I mean, a thing, thing going to zero. And then you can show that this sort of amounts to that. There's a third one as well. 
There's a third one where you can start off with Fn acting on these physical states not equal to zero, but the sandwich is equal to zero. This sounds very weird, but uh, you can actually do this, okay? So apparently there are three different ways for every, I mean, every sort of set of oscillators L, if you wish, you, and you can do this. Hence, we seem to have, you know, nine things that we can do, okay? So, so you know, you, you can start off, so, so you know, three into three, basically, right? But it also has to be that the underlying DMS algebra has also to be, <laughs> I mean, satisfied at the end of the day. And you can do, uh, do uh, you know, uh, do, I mean, you know, <laughs> thorough analysis of the whole thing. And you'll find that at the end of the day, only three of them actually emerge, uh, emerge to be uh, consistent in, uh, in, in the sense that the BMS algebra closes and, 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 and you know, things, things go through. So there are actually three inequivalent vacua emerging from this classical theory that I told you about at first. Induced vacuum is the one that we discussed earlier. There is something which is, which realizes the highest weights this is called, this we call the flipped vacuum. This leads to something called, I mean, amicristic strings, which I will not go into. And the last weird one is, is, is an interesting new, new vacuum, which we call the, I mean, oscillator vacuum. And this contains a huge, a hints of a huge underlying gauge symmetry. Um, again, so if, if somebody is, is interested, uh, we, we try and do, I mean, try and say a lot more in, in, in this paper, I'd urge you to go, go and have a look at it. But the uh, thing that has, been, that has been asked a few times in this talk is that what happened to, I mean, critical dimensions, what, what happened to, uh, you know, the central charges, I mean, so on and so forth. And uh, so let me, let me sort of try and wrap up by saying a few things about this, okay? Uh, maybe, yeah, I, I don't know if I, if I have more time or not, but- Yes, so, yes, it's fine. No, yeah, don't okay. worry, you can take more time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, uh, so the singular limit, uh, there is a singular limit on the word sheet, right? So this, this uh, does this mean that there has to be a similar singular limit on the space time? So if so, what is, what is I mean, what is uh, going to happen? So that's that's one 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 thing is that you know that, I mean should your background obey Einstein's equations at all or there should be some limit of Einstein's equations that are obeyed and so on and so forth. On the other hand, uh, you know as I have tried to say, most massless point particles, uh, you know, move on null. Uh, I mean null 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 geodesics. Of course, they, I mean, just because something has become massless, it doesn't mean that it has to, you know, travel in another space time, right? So, uh, you know, if we take this, uh, I mean, uh, tensionless limit on string theory, it, I mean, it, it should, I mean, we should probably expect that they, they stay in the same, I mean, stay, same, same, same space time, which sort of has Einstein's equations and so on and so forth. So, it's not trivial to, to, to ask if the Lorentz algebra closes or not. It may close, it may not close, we don't know offhand. And plus there are three vacuo, right? Who knows what is gonna happen? So does it close for I mean, any dimension at all? You, you can do a very nasty long, long analysis by, 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 by looking at, 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 at oscillators in, and try, trying to close this. And then you'll find very uh, interestingly that the Lorentz algebra does close. For the I mean, oscillator vacuum, it closes for d equal to 26. For the flipped vacuum, it closes for d equal to 26. For the induced vacuum, interestingly, there are no uh, I mean, conditions on d. It's consistent in all, all dimensions. And specifically, if you're going from relative, I mean, relativistic tensile string theory in d equal to uh, 26, you can stay there. So uh, you can think of these, these guys as tensionless corners of quantum tensile string theory. I mean, of course, there, there is more that has to be done. We have to try and look at the world sheet and the analog of the beta functions being equal to zero, see that it, I mean, you know, gives you Einstein's equations at the end of the day. And that analysis has not been done, but at least, we, we know that this is going to happen. So, so at least the light in, in the light cone, 
uh, we are able to show that this, this I mean, algebra, the background Lorentz algebra does close. Okay. So, uh, yep, that's, uh, that's, that's something. So 403, so let me um, take two or uh, three more minutes. Just, okay. sorry, Arjun, yeah. maybe yeah. I missed something, but uh, how can the theory with that constraint and dimensions can be a limit of the tensile string theory? No, what, what, what I'm saying is that it's not that you, so if, it, if you, you know, at the end of the day, if you started out, uh, and if you got an answer where D was equal to 53, right? Mm. So, you know, you start off with usual uh, I mean, tensile string theory and you dial, I mean, dial the tension, you dial the tension and you end up with something that lives at, in D equal to 53. So it, it's, I mean, very close to this point as well. You, you are in uh, uh, 26 dimensions. Then suddenly when you hit it, you are in uh, 53 dimensions. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now, if, if this can exist in all dimensions, then it, should, it would not, not, not be an issue. So it exists in D equal to uh, uh, 26 as well. So one of the reasons why, why, why this happens is that if you try and think about, uh, you know, trying, trying, to, trying to understand what, what, what the limit is, then I showed you that there were two, these two central terms, right? CL and CM. What you find is that in this induced case, CL and CM are both equal to zero. You, you can maybe, I, 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 I can just show you here. So with, with the identifications that, that, that we had, CL was equal to C minus of C bar and CM was equal to epsilon times C plus C bar, okay? So uh, C, you know, for string, I mean, I mean for I mean, usual string theory, C is equal to C bar. So this is equal to zero, right? And I mean, as I mean, Ashok what, what, what was pointing out earlier, these Cs are, are essentially the number of uh, I mean, scalar fields that uh, I mean, exist on the world sheet. So it's natural that these, these will not I mean, blow up, right? So these do not scale as one, one by epsilon. So this is a finite number multiplied by something which is going, I mean, going to zero. So this is also equal to zero. So in the limit, this is, this is a way of trying to see that things actually, I mean, you know, uh, this this is what what I, I mean what actually happened. So if you if you take that that limit, so this is uh, mm -hmm. this is the this is the place place you will be in. Okay. Yes, thanks. Sure. So okay. So uh, let me end by two quick examples. As I was saying, as I was saying earlier, I, I really don't don't want to hop on this a uh, long a long time because I don't really have much to say. So just just a point of view is that this is where 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 can we apply this. So one place where we can see that the I mean effective string tension actually goes to zero is when strings are, are near the I mean Hagedorn uh, I mean Hagedorn I mean phase transition point. So uh, so what 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 we were what what you know what we said a long long time back and we have not really built up on this is that uh, there is a world sheet way of trying trying to I mean so so maybe what what we can do let's let's not go into strong statements uh, maybe what 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 we can say is maybe the the Bose Einstein like thing that I showed you is a signature of of the I mean hydron phase transition so there are some new degrees of freedom that that appear here so even when you hit the now I mean hit this I mean th uh, the uh, worksheet and worksheet uh, and worksheet description, it maybe it doesn't break down. It just goes from being, uh, I mean, Riemannian to being 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 this, uh, I mean, Carolian uh, in 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 this limit. But um, I mean, we, we have not really done much after this. So so yeah, this is this is as you can see back from from the days. And finally, um, let me try and end with this. So. I said a little bit about strings near black holes. So uh, it has been shown recently uh, that, uh, you know, when you are in the near, near horizon of a black hole, uh, that becomes this, I mean, ultra relativistic limit as well. Of course, you would, you'd expect the light, light cones to close, close down. So the stuff that you, uh, I mean, so on, on, on the horizon, these things appear. So what you can do is you can very, very, uh, very sort of, uh, 
you know, in a straightforward way, what you can start off with, you can start off with, with strings near, I mean, near a black hole and look at the, uh, I mean, induced metric. And you, you, you can see that this, I mean, near horizon limit is actually something that dials your string, uh, I mean, string tension to zero. So if you wish, uh, uh, I mean, a Carroll limit in the space time also induces this, uh, I mean, Carroll limit on the world sheet. Okay, um, so uh, let me let me summarize. So as I said, our, our uh, principally what we showed uh, is that BMS replaces two copies of the Virasa algebra on the tensionless world sheet. The limiting so so there there is uh, our limiting procedure which reproduces this earlier work by Isbald et al. And we got got the algebra more expansions etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, match in both approaches. When we looked at the, I mean, quantum mechanical theory, what we saw is, is that there, there was an emergent open string, uh, which appears from, uh, if you wish, the uh, condensation of the perturbative states in, in this limit. Uh, we, we can recast this in terms of Rindler, uh, I mean, Rindler physics, and uh, we, we, we can formulate the uh, decreasing uh, tension as, as an, an increasing acceleration of the world sheet. And finally, I showed you that there are three inequivalent quantum theories. I didn't show you, I just I mean, told you this, uh, that, that emerge from a, a single I mean, uh, classical theory that, that we discussed before. So two of them are consistent for d equal to 26. One is consistent for all dimensions. And hence, these can be viewed as sort of uh, corners of quantum uh, tensile string theory. There are some applications to I mean, Hagedorn physics and strings near black holes, which we want to I mean, get to uh, shortly. And oh, sorry. And finally, uh, there are there are a lot of things to do. I mean, you know, look at the spectrum more 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 carefully, and uh, so so look at light cone. You know, so we have done light light cone uh, uh, quantization. There's some other work in progress. We want to understand uh, you know, how to deal with these sort of, uh, I mean, uh, different world sheets in, 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 I mean, in the uh, path integral formulation, maybe to PRST. You know, there are several uh, things that, that, that we can uh, ask about, you know, if there is a um, quantum uh, tunneling between this back wall. Uh, there's obviously what, what we, uh, I mean, what happens when we add supersymmetry to the game, we have, looked at the uh, classical analysis and we want, want to figure out what's, what's happening in the uh, quantum mechanical regime do, do uh, I mean, do some, some very uh, interesting things uh, appear here. Uh, finally, long-term goals is uh, linking up to gross, gross mende. Um, maybe what is happening on, on the world sheet is, is there any, any sort of links to soft, soft theorems and memory effects on the world sheet? Uh, I have very, very briefly mentioned, I mean, Hagedorn, uh, uh, I mean, Hagedorn physics. Uh, we would like to like to uh, readdress this and, and you know clean it up. And of course, you know, uh, we'd like to do it in DS and, and, and I mean ADS and then DS. And the last thing is, it's just, uh, it's just words. So let me not sp spend any more time on that. So thank you all for listening, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to take questions. Great. So thanks a lot, Arjun, for the great talk. Uh, so are there any more questions for Arjun? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, please. So <clears throat> when you consider the theory on, say, as you were considering the theory on the horizon, near horizon limit. Yes. Uh, when you quantize the theory, when you quantize the string theory, the spectrum that you get could it be mm -hmm. thought of as the boundary dual of the gravity theory inside? Uh, I mean, the bulk gravity theory. Uh, that, that's that's a loaded question. Um, uh, so so at at the moment, let's 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 just say that you know these are there are a lot of I mean things that you can obviously ask. I mean, I'm I'm not not sure we are at a place where we can address this, and I like to do things in little bits. <laughs> Um, it would be great. So, so first off, uh, it would be great to actually uh, quantize this theory. I mean, in the sense that in the black hole background, just take this thing and you know do do what what I mean what what we had done for flat space. 
uh, that itself is uh, you know fraught with I mean a lot of I mean, pitfalls here and there and everywhere. So for example, I I I, I have uh, so 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 you know so there are structures which 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 appear in the near horizon limit. So there will be a way that you know what we what what we have done in, with with the Rindler should fit in there. So ultimately. Perhaps we might be able to get some idea of what string theory has to do about, uh, I mean, black hole, yeah, I mean, near horizons and, and, you know, maybe on the horizon and so on. But at the moment, I think it's a bridge too far for me to say anything about. It. So at the moment, we are, we are nowhere near that, okay? So we are just trying to understand this, this sort of very singular limit, trying to give you some ideas of what the classical theory looks like, symmetry aspects of it, quantum mechanically, even for the, I mean, vanilla case of things on, on, on flat space, there seems to be, you know, weird things happening. We're trying to understand that. So the next level is to try and understand it and, you know, in backgrounds which are not flat. And, and then we, we, we go from there. So, I mean, I mean, unfortunately I'm not a very, I mean, so I, I'm not, not, not very quick with these things. So I do not have a great answer to you, but in an ideal world, I would, I would like to solve quantum gravity, right? But it's not an ideal world. <laughs> Look at all these Greek letters floating around. Okay. Yes. So you mentioned this uh, um, BRST quantization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, shouldn't that give a unique theory instead of three? Um, I think not. I think not. Again, again, the point essentially is it's to do with what you put in as the <laughs> vacuum, right? So there has to be information of that. So there uh, have been. So yeah, yeah, this 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 you can rephrase in terms of ordering operators as well. But so, so isn't isn't it just how you impose this constraint, like this VSO constraint? I mean, the analog of this. Yeah, that's yeah. that's 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 what I'm saying. So it's not it, you can impose it in more ways than one. That is for sure. So yeah. now, I mean, one of the exercises that I was trying to do is, you know, sort of the C, I mean, the C C C vacuum. I just sort of it, it, it cooked up in my head. So, so, you know, one of the things to do is, you know, if it didn't satisfy the <laughs> Lorentz algebra or something like, like that, then, 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 you know, then I could say that, okay, there's one, one less thing, I mean, one less thing to do, but it seems to be fine. Um, there seems to be three of these, whether you like it or, or not, <laughs> there just seems to be three of them. Okay. And in super strings, who knows? I mean, there are more of these guys, right? Each of them will have a factor of three and, and, and uh, 81 to start off with. So who knows what, I mean, what will happen? Maybe it is to do with different ways of trying to, I mean, trying to take the net. Yeah. So there, there, is, there, there, there are ways to try and take, you know, it's, it's, it's a limit that you're trying, trying to take and send some, some parameters. You, you can keep some parameters large you can send 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 some 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 to you know there is different ways to do this right the most naive one seems to uh, seems to get to uh, and get you to this induced vacuum there is there's things that you can do with i mean string theory with a flip and then you can and, and take some some limits and you get 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 to this uh, i mean flip vacuum and so on but, but but then why why should the ones that are not the limits of the downside string should be physically relevant? Oh. That's a good question. I I would I would so again so physically relevant in the sense that what I what I have uh, just you know not not said much about there's this this I mean ambitwister stuff right so so which which is actually uh, I mean gives you it gives you scattering amplitudes. Of, of, of things and so on. This seems to be one of the ways of trying to get it as well. So that is clearly, that is something that, that works. The induced vacuum is something that gives you hints that there is this emergent, I mean, open string and so on. The oscillator vacuum seems to have 
high spins in it, seems to have this huge gauge redundancy in it. Um, a priority, I don't know if there's something that we should be actively looking for, but we seem to have arrived at it. And so if we have arrived at it, if you do not have a good reason to throw it away, um, you just keep it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. I have another question. Yeah, please. Uh, <clears throat> so when you were uh, considering the Carolian limit of both the world sheet and the space time, mm -hmm. were you kind of, I mean, so, uh, so you had this Rindler wedge kind of picture, right? Uh, were, yeah. you kind of, were you kind of trying to allude to the fact that the string world sheet aligns with the Rindler wedge or something like that? No, so the stuff about Rindler that I said in the talk is uh, just trying to understand the string world sheet as, I mean, as being that, okay? As being Reason, that? Yes. So, so you, it's, it's just a structure on the string world sheet itself. Okay. Okay. Which, uh, so, so, I mean, at least for this, I mean, the, the little bit that I showed you in, in the talk, what I was saying is that since you, you, I mean, so what I showed, well, what I briefly showed you was that you can think about uh, the uh, you know, tension less limit as mm -hmm. being something which, which is, which, uh, you know, so you, you can think of it as, as, as being uh, a series of observers on the world sheet with more and more, I mean, acceleration. So the world sheet is the one, one which actually does that. So let me try and take you back to the picture. No, not, not this one here. So the world sheet itself is accelerated. So this is, this is inherent to the world sheet. But you are right. Where could this happen? This could happen when you take a string near, I mean, I mean near a I mean, black hole, where you know sort of the near near horizon Rindler structure could actually induce this on the world sheet itself. This was what we tried to do in this later work, which was you know sometime uh, late last last year. I keep on wrong places. Uh, yeah, this well not this. Whatever. Yeah, if you. Uh, so what we tried to do in this work was essentially try, try what you are saying in the sense that you, know, you have a space time, you have tried to put some strings there. So this is a black hole space time. And once you try and go near the black hole, there will be an induce. So there is a Rindler in the near, near, near horizon that induces some structure on your world sheet, okay? We have tried to do it. I mean, okay. and yeah, so that's, that's, that's what we tried to do in this work. So, here in a, in a, in a sort of, uh, you know, quick way, I try, try to show you that if you take, a, a, I mean, this uh, relativistic limit in the space time, this will induce something on the world sheet as well, right? So this is something that you can see. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, so, so yeah, we, we, we'll try, try to, you know, try to work on this a little bit more because there are certain intricacies as, as you were, were asking earlier about, you know, can you sort of, I mean, <laughs> quantize the system and learn from it. So that's, that's, that's sort of, you know, something that we want to do uh, soon. Um, I, I have a naive question, if there is time. Yes, please. Um, that picture you have of the open string, yeah, uh, and as it accelerates, uh, it, it yeah. becomes pinched in the center. Uh, how how do you get that picture? Like... <laughs> okay, this is this is a part part of of the talk that I. This is by the way, this is not a nine nine question at all. This may open a sort of <laughs> directions which I was not planning to go go into. So I told you that that actually uh, you know there is this way that you can get the uh, boundary state right in in this way 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 that you sort of the things things become long. The thing that I didn't uh, you know so I sort of swept under the rug 
is uh, stuff here. So um, there are these there are these two ways that 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 you can get these these uh, these. Um, so, so there, and as I was trying to explain earlier, there are these two sets of I mean, sets of oscillators, right? You have these alpha sets of oscillators and these C sets of oscillators. So I said that how how the alpha will look if you see sit sit in the C and you look at alpha, but you could also do the reverse stuff. You could sit on 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 alpha and look at C as well. Then instead of trying to get a Neumann uh, boundary state. They what you get is something which is a Dirichlet boundary state and Dirichlet in all, all directions. Okay. So actually the thing that I was not, not going to say <laughs> is that you also get another one, which is the, the flipped thing, if you wish. So, so this, this was one, one, one picture where you, where you, where you, the, the, the thing gets, gets pinched off in the middle, it becomes a space time point. And you can actually get get it from the this very simple algebra as well. So they are actually two different, if you wish. <laughs> I was not going to flash this one, but since I'm emboldened, let me let me say say this as well. So there are two complementary points of view uh, of accelerated observers looking at 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 I mean at this. So in one there is a family of of observers. Um. And, and, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, my, yeah. my Institute of Wi-Fi is, is really terrible and I missed, oh, yeah. I think the last 30 seconds of that explanation. If you will. Um, yeah, okay, let me, let me, let me sort of go, go back just, just once more. So as I was saying, there are these two sets of oscillators, right? There is this alpha set of oscillators and there is C set of oscillators. So, and, and, and you know, so they, they can be written in, in, in terms of the other. And that's that's a sort of a bowling map between them. So you you can write one of the I mean, vacuum in terms of the other, but you you I mean you can also I mean, do the reverse. Interestingly, what happens is in one of them that like like we saw earlier, you get this I mean Neumann state in all all directions. If you just simply do the reverse, you get a Dirichlet in all 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 directions. So the idea essentially is, so Dirichlet in all, all directions would be a D instant on. So that's a space-time space -time point. And that is the thing that I guess you were asking. So the pinching to this point. So as you, as you go along here, so let me, let me sort of try and do that. So as you go, so you start off with something here and it actually reduces in size and gets to, uh, I mean, gets to a, 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 a point. So we, Try to interpret this as as the I mean, the instant on. So, in a sense, what we are saying, <laughs> I was uh, I was trying to uh, trying to not look at this. There are two distinct observer dependent pictures of open strings emerging from closed strings in this limit. So, depending on where you sit, it's either it either fills out I mean, your I mean, your your whole, whole, whole space time, or it becomes a, a, a point. Now again. The math that I have is very simple. There are these, these are words which may be reinterpreted in some other way, but this is what I think it is. That is, and I, I have some, well, not pretty, but maybe intriguing <laughs> pictures to actually try, try and say what, what it is. It's a lot. I mean, it's but a lot, lot to say, of course. It's a lot to say, and, and I need to have more proof to back myself up, which, yeah, which we're trying to do. In yeah, general, the picture is definitely very pretty. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, it's yeah. So yeah, in general, you would need both Dirichlet and bound, Neumann boundary conditions if you want to have, say, open strings that are ending on the horizon of a black hole, for instance. Uh, I don't. So so again, I would. I mean, remind you that at least in this part of the analysis, there is no black hole anywhere. No, no. Even if you have a Rindler wedge or something like that, then uh, if you if you want to have strings which end, uh, stri so for instance, a string would would oscillate in all dimensions, not not the not only the dimensions. Remember that this is the world sheet, okay? This yeah, is yeah. the world sheet. Yeah. So the Rindler is on the world sheet. True, but the string will oscillate not only on the 
coordinates of the world sheet but will have oscillations on the spherical uh, on the spherical part of the space time as well right sure sure yeah so that's what i'm saying i mean in general you would have the ends of the string uh, sitting mm -hmm. on the rindler wedge and the bulk of the string the body of the string oscillating in the sphere as, yeah, as what, you... what I'm what I'm saying that 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 I mean as I'm trying to say this is purely uh, something which is a world sheet and yeah, world, yeah, yeah, world sheet picture right at the moment this is purely a world sheet picture I'm not trying to link it up to anything that is you know Rindler in the background I I I did try try to do that a little bit but at least for the uh, pictures that you have out here everything is on the world sheet. So there is no sphere. No, but there is a target space, right? This yeah, has I, 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 I am, I am at, at the moment just, I mean, agnostic to that. Okay. But finally, it, it will, it will, it will, of course. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It will obviously be, be there, and we'll have to address that. But the world sheet, I would uh, presume, is the more, more uh, fundamental object, right? So this. All, all I'm saying is that this is happening on the world sheet. What is happening on the world sheet? The, I mean, tensionless limit and the pictures that I've drawn for you, not, not the one, one at, at the end, but the, the one here, essentially. This one, these are world sheets. Yeah, but they have to have an embedding in space time, right? Of course, that's that's something that that you know that's a second order thing that I am not trying trying to address here. But so, so, so when you say that, uh, depending on where you sit, you either see like D D twenty five Gwen or D instanton. Yeah, um, it's depending where you sit on the world sheet, right? Oh, depending on the vacuum that you sit in. Ah, oh, okay. So you, you, you have two sets. So, so all, all I'm saying is that your observers have access to either these alpha oscillators or these C, C oscillators. So if, if it's the, I mean, alpha, I mean, if it's the alpha oscillators will build up the Cs, this is something else. When it's the Cs which build, build up the alphas, you see something else. When, when you are in, in between, when, when, when you're in, I mean, you know, sort of, you know, trying to, so, so you, you have, uh, I mean, uh, Except for the end end points, you can go I mean, between them. But when you are at the end point, something funny happens basically. Again, so so the math at, at, at the end of the day, the math is just this. So I found these two boxed equations and I'm try, trying to interpret what they are. That's all. I see, okay. I mean, there is, of course, a lot that I do not know, but, you know. Uh... Okay. Thanks, that was a beautiful talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you didn't. You didn't talk about the open string. What happened? No, no. The the I mean, open string is 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 of course there. So you have two. There is two sort of uh, you know. So at the end of the day, you are you are when when you hit hit the sorry. The I mean, open string is of course there. The open string is well here. At the end of the day, you are always. I mean, going to. I mean, I'm going to get. Going to get the open string. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what about the tensionless limit of the? Oh, well, tensionless limit of, of, of the open string. Yeah. Another sort of. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's that's a very very uh, very. Um, that's something that. You know, so for the ambitwisters, what happens is that people have found that these, uh, I mean, they are actually, I mean, in in incompatible with 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 the boundary conditions. I and and you know very very naively trying 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 to say say this. Uh, what we found is that the BMS algebra uh, appears when you have these two L's and L bars, right? Um, 
for the open strings, you just have the else. So, and the other thing is that whenever you sort of hit an, a, a, a null surface, uh, it should be, so, so the structures that you get on a, I mean, null, null, I mean, null surface, so in, in this case, it's in two dimensions. So the BMS three algebra is something that you'll always get. I don't quite see a way of trying to get at that from just one, uh, I, I mean, one, one, I mean, one with algebra, if you will. Uh, there are certain, uh, certain, uh, you know, I, I mean, attempts at trying to do that, they lose out parts of the algebra. You, you can get some massless, uh, higher high spin states and so on and so forth. The natural thing to say is that we need to look at it carefully and, and uh, you know, it's not something that we have done that much. I, I, I would, would agree that it's a very natural thing to try and do, but the attempts at trying to do it ended up with something a little naive. And uh, that's, that's, that's what, uh, I mean, we have not really gone forward with it, but it's, it's something that I'd like to do and like to address better. Um, are there any more questions for Arjun? So if not, uh, let's thank Arjun for the very uh, intriguing talk. <laughs> thank you very much. And Thanks hopefully, a lot, Arjun. yeah, hopefully yeah. next time around we can have ha have these things face to face. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.